Hello and welcome to Thursday Q&A Live, the show where DJs get answers to things they didn't know they didn't know. You're with me, Phil Morse, here in the Digital DJ Tips studio. We are the world's leading online DJ school and we do this every Thursday, 3pm London, 10am Eastern, live on YouTube, Twitch and Facebook. You might be watching the recording though, don't worry, you can still ask questions underneath and we'll get to you. So today's head topic, our lead item, is three free laptop apps that DJs keep quiet about. You're not gonna tell you, they might say I'm a Serato user, I'm a Recordbox user, whatever, but these are things that they don't really talk about, but they really are massively, massively useful. So I'd like to share them with you today and talk to you about why I think they're apps you ought to be adding if you're a DJ. In the modern world, these are things that are gonna make your life so much easier. And I'll show them to you and I'll also tell you why. And then towards the end of the show, because this is an hour long show, we are going to just throw open the any questions, chat bots and talk, chat bots, chat box, and talk to you wherever you are, wherever you're watching about whatever you want help with in your DJing. And also tell us the apps and software that you use that you think has really helped your DJing, apart from your DJ software, right? Right, okay, so let's get started. Uh, I've got three to share with you. There's actually four, because these are all for Windows and Mac, but I'm gonna share with you one, which is actually, I recommend a different one, depending on whether you're using Windows or Mac, because it's a bit better. Uh, so the first one then is this one here, Ultimate Vocal Remover. So Ultimate Vocal Remover will let you prepare acapellas ahead of time. It, there's loads of apps that will let you do this out there on the internet, loads and loads of them. There's a lot of them that operate in your browser, like Stemverter and Al.ai, uh, Al, Al, Al I think it's called. And lo there's literally, I, I get in my inbox every week, hey, we've just invented an app that'll take acapellas. And, you know, do you want to review it? Well, no, because there's about 100 more. This one is different. Ultimate, vo Ultimate Vocal Remover is available for both your Windows and Mac computer. You download it and you install it. And then once you've done that, you've got an app there that you can use on your desktop to do this stuff to the, the height of the quality that you get here is absolutely mind bogglingly, mind bogglingly incredible. It really, really is. I've never seen an app uh, that gives you this much quality uh, with these or rather I have, but you have to pay for it. So if you want a vocal remover app that is as good as the paid for options that are out there, it's not as easy to use as the paid for options that are out there, but it is as good as them, then do take a look at Ultimate Vocal Remover because it's awesome. So this is what it looks like. Once you've downloaded and installed it and you have to kind of like jump through any hoops to install it because it's not from your app store, you know, so you have to say, yeah, I'm okay you're installing this, even though you don't know what it is, etc., etc. Once you've installed it, you use this input here to just grab something that you want to uh, process and the output to tell it where you want to record it. So for instance, you can see here, I've been doing uh, some stems work on Dua Lipa's Levitating. This is for our forthcoming stems and acapellas course, actually. And then this is the clever bit. You can just click start processing and it will spit out an acapella and an instrumental. Or you can choose different modes modes here to spit out all four stems so you can have the bass line and the drums and the melody and the acapellas as well. Uh, and there's loads more in here which gets really really geeky but the bottom line is if you want to get deep on this you can get the highest quality stems you can imagine, the highest quality acapellas, the cleanest drums, the sweetest sounding instruments. I love it. UVR is, it, it is a bit geeky, it takes a bit of work. In our forthcoming stems and acapellas course, we are going to, well, we have, we've got lots of tuition in there, which helps you use this properly. It helps you use it effectively. But it is a great app and I do really recommend it. As long as you've downloaded stuff from, from GitHub before, which is where you this kind of thing hangs out and you're, you're quite happy installing things that your operating might, system might say no, um, then it's great, we love it. And as I say, in our forthcoming course, we are going to um, be able to show you exactly how to use this properly uh, to get acapellas ahead of time that sounds so much better than anything you'll find in uh, you know in your DJ software when you just press that acapella button. By the way, um, if you want to, if you're interested in in this course that I'm talking about, let me show you where you can uh, find out more about it. Just head to your browser uh, and type Digital DJ Tips in at the top. Um, and in fact, no, don't do that. Type this instead: DJTips.co/slash 
stems, right? djtips.co slash stems. It'll take you to this page here, fill in your email address and we'll let you know as soon as that course is ready. Okay, so if you're interested in extracting stems and acapellas and instrumentals and drums, far, far, far in excess of the quality that your DJ software will do. So you can then record them and have them in your DJ program ready to just play without needing to turn on any of that stem stuff. Definitely go and look at UVR, it's awesome. Now, here's the next piece. These are kind of, there's kind of a theme here. This is all audio apps that we're talking about. Here is the next piece of info that I wanna share with you about this because once you have, like for instance, um, started messing around with audio on your computer, started saying, okay, I wanna get audio from my computer, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. You're gonna come across a problem quite quickly. And that problem is this. When you are wanting to record something that's playing on your computer, let's say you are, you've bought a, uh, a track, you've bought a song, and you found an acapella of it on YouTube, and you can't be bothered using software like this, like I'm just showing you here, just, you found a great acapella of it on YouTube, and you wanna rip it from YouTube. You already own the song, right? So there's no problem here. You can do it in your in your DJ gear. You know, you can just press whatever buttons you've set up to to work stems on your DJ equipment uh, to get an acapella. But actually, you'd rather have the an acapella you found on YouTube that sounds great. How do you do it? How do you rip it? The problem is that modern laptops, they have kind of like, if you hit record in, in a laptop, say in, I'm on a Mac, so in QuickTime, I hit record, the things I can select are all things that are plugged into the laptop, right? Microphones, or it's just the microphone that's built into it. That's it, you can't select anything else to record. I can't select Safari or Chrome or you know uh, anything else I've got that's playing audio on my laptop. It won't let me do it, right? And also the output, if you go to the sound settings on your computer, you know, it says, where do you want the sound to go to? Well, it just, it's gonna say speakers, right? Because that's what you've got built in. Or maybe if you've got an audio card plugged in, it'll say my audio interface output or whatever. But what if you could have like a cable that you could plug into the, the headphones output and back into the microphone input so that anything you're playing on your computer can be fed back into it so your damn recording app can actually record the damn thing, right? I bet you've been, come across this problem before. Well, what you need is a cable, but you don't need a real cable, although that would work if you still have a separate microphone input on your laptop. You don't need a real cable. What you need is a virtual cable. And that's what I'm gonna show you now. I'm gonna show you two virtual cable apps. These are so popular with DJs, they really are, because they, they solve that problem of, I want to sample something that's playing on my laptop. You're watching Netflix and you hear a great line, or there's a great sound effect, and you think, I want it, I need it. You can't do it. Well, you can do it, but you need one of these apps. So the two I'm gonna show you are, the first one is called VB Cable. So VB Cable is a great little virtual audio cable. You install it on your computer and then you get two new items in your sound settings. When you go to your audio input and audio output settings on your computer, as well as microphone, you will have cable input, as it says here. And as well as your speakers, you'll have cable output. Well, it's the other way around actually, but you have these two extra settings. And the idea is that you just set these two instead of the microphone and speakers. And then you have the ability to record any audio on your system. And actually we talked through this in our digital DJ lab subscription training where we've got a whole action plan. We have these things called action plans here at the school where we just take something pretty geeky and we just deconstruct the whole thing and talk you through it step by step. This is in our digital DJ lab program. So if you are in our digital DJ lab program, go look for it there. However, this is also available on uh, Mac, but we don't recommend using this for Mac. It doesn't work as well, but there's a, an, an alternative for Mac and it's this one here called Black Hole. Uh, now it says donate 10 pounds. You don't actually have to if you're feeling like you haven't got any money you can click I can't afford to donate and download it for free. It essentially does exactly the same thing, but it works slightly better on the Mac. By the way, I'm gonna give you in the description underneath this video, if you're watching it on YouTube, or in the article underneath this, if you're watching it on Digital DJ Tips, I'm gonna give you the links to all this software. It's all free uh, and it's all for Mac and Windows unless I tell you otherwise. So I'm gonna give you the downloads so you can go and play with it for yourself. So you don't have to scribble all this stuff down. Uh, but yeah, if you want, um, 
me to teach you how to use this app because it is, you know, there's a few little hoops to jump through. Then go down to the Digital DJ Tips website, uh, go to the homepage and scroll right to the very bottom where you will find uh, our training programs bit where currently there's only one training program here, this one here called Digital DJ Lab. Uh, jump into Digital DJ Lab, it's our only subscription product actually, uh, and you will find hundreds and hundreds of deconstructions of DJ mixes, but also action plans where you learn stuff like I just told you. And uh, like I say, there's hundreds of these. It's like a kind of Netflix for DJs, but you learn something with everything you watch. Uh, okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is a an app that kind of follows on from what I just said, because if you've got this virtual audio cable going on inside your computer, right, you've got some audio and you want, want to record it. Well, in Windows, I'm sure there's a recording app in Windows that comes with it. There's one in Mac, QuickTime, but it's rubbish. It really is very, very basic. And then when you've recorded something, what do you want to do next? You might want to make it louder. You might want to take the silence off the beginning or the silence off the end. You might want to apply some effects to it. You might want to do any kind of thing. How do you do that? How do you do that on your computer? Well, you could buy an expensive audio editing app. They are out there. But you know what most DJs do? And I really mean, I don't think I know a DJ uh, who's professional or who's been around this for a long time that doesn't do this. They go and grab this app here. It's called Audacity. And Audacity is an app that lets you edit audio. So I've loaded a track here. Uh, this track is now ready for me to do whatever I want with. I can just chop and change it. I can move bits around inside the audio. I can apply effects to it. I can do so much in here, but I can also record inside this app as well. And I can output in all kinds of file formats as well. So this is just an audio. It's kind of like a Swiss army knife, basically. It covers everything you could possibly want to do with audio. And one thing we found ourselves using it with here in the studio this week, because as I say, we're in the middle of recording a, a how to DJ with acapellas and stems course. One thing we found ourselves doing here in the studio is using it. So let's say you rip an acapella from a track, right? Now, most tracks, the vocals don't start right at the beginning, do they? They start, I don't know, it could be anything 20 seconds in or something. So now you've got a file with 20 seconds of silence. No problem. You load it up into something like Audacity. Uh, you just highlight the bit that you want to delete, click delete, click export, bang. Now you've got a version where the acapella starts at the beginning. It's a really obvious choice. But honestly, I probably load this track, load this app twice a week and have done for probably the last 15 years. Um, Audacity is free, it's for Windows and Mac, you can get it on their website, I'll show you their website. Uh, it really is worth grabbing a copy of Audacity if you don't already have one, because uh, it's awesome. This is their website there, so you can go grab it from here. Again, there'll be a link underneath. And actually in one of our courses, our, the course that we use this in is our um, mixtapes course, because if you're making a mixtape, you know, you've recorded a mix, the next thing you want to do is tidy up that mix. You want to master it. You want to make it nice and loud. You want maybe to apply some compression. You want, certainly want to cut out your mistakes. Uh, and our Pro Mix State Formula course is where we teach how to do this. And the software we use in this course is Audacity because it's free and it's awesome. You see there, there's a whole module in that course, editing using Audacity. So there's three pieces of software that DJs don't talk about, but a lot of them use. Uh, one of them is uh, the best way to extract for free stems, acapellas, instruments, drums and vocals from, uh, and, um, and melodies from your music. Uh, Ultimate uh, Vocal Remover does much more than remove vocals. It's so, so cool for Mac and Windows for free. Uh, we then looked at two ways that you can root your audio inside your computer so you can record anything, not just the microphone. Uh, and then we looked at a great way of recording stuff, but also of doing a lot more to audio audacity. But what do you use? What programs do you use as well as your DJ software? Tell me that, but also ask me anything else you want. That's the end of what I've got ready for you today. And so for the rest of our show, which by my reckoning is about 40 minutes, just gonna talk to everyone who is chatting away on our channels. So if you're watching the, the recording of this, uh, you've now seen what it said on the thumbnail and the title, but hang around because this is the show where DJs learn the answers to things they didn't know they didn't 
No, uh, and we've got lots and lots and lots of stuff coming in, as we always have uh, live here. So we're going to just go back to our uh, live chat now and see what you guys and girls are saying uh, and have a hangout. Have a, I don't know, what would you call it? We're all down the pub together. We're having a chat. We're chatting DJing down the pub. I've had a long day today. I've been, I've been wrestling with cameras and LUTs and audio compression and uh, editing videos that are very, very picky and that have got lots of shots in them and trying to get software working and stuff. My head is frazzled. So I love this part of the day because we just get to chat DJ together. That's great. Um, so that's what we're going to do for the rest of the show. And here is where it all happens, by the way. Here's all the comments coming in live uh, from all the channels where you guys and girls are chatting to us. So I'm going to I'm going to work through these now, saying hello to you and helping you with what you want help with. So hi, Mixmaster G and Kesha and Don uh, to Assi in the French Riviera. Lovely, love it. Uh, to AJ, uh, greetings from Selector DJs, says AJ. Hi, Philip, who says I'm on time today. Nice one, Philip. Uh, hello to the Ruckus. Hello to David, aka D Sounds 45, DJ A D Foster. You don't like my music and all our regulars. Hello, Steve. Uh, my compadre here at Digital DJ Tips. Steve is watching today as well. Hi, hello to Ivan. Best, best wishes to the Ukraine from us here at Digital DJ Tips. Ivan. Uh, so, right, what have you got to say? What's, ha what's up? What's happening? Give me your questions. Give me your comments. What software are you using? Uh, what can you add to what I'm saying here? Philip says, for Mac DJs, get to know, this is a great tip, get to know Apple Script and shortcuts. It will make your life so much easier and more efficient for music organization, etc. I agree. I love shortcuts. They're, uh, they're an underused things in Mac OS and, and in iOS, actually. So thank you for that. Um, so do you need an audio interface with this software? No, none of the software I've just shown you, you need an audio interface with at all. Uh, so the... Link for our STEMS course, well done team, is now in the description and also in the comments on these channels uh, where the chat's coming up. Thank you for that. Uh, DJ AD Foster says, hey Phil, rocking that, rocking that Flex 4. Uh, I know I'm still leaving so much on the floor that I haven't learned using my Flex 4. This controller could be seen as Another secret of pro DJs. You know, the number of DJs that use proper gear, and by proper gear, I mean, you know, a proper full setup like this at festivals and clubs and so on, who've got nothing more than one of these at home. Why? Because it's got everything you need to practice and even record sets. It's a really, really nice little controller, the Flex 4. I totally recommend it. You've got, we've got it here paired with the XP2, which has got all the buttons and controls that you might miss on a little controller like this. These two together, they do everything that a big controller can do. They really do, especially when you start mapping this. We've actually been, I've actually been making a lesson about how to map stems, uh, how to map acapellas and stuff. So these buttons up here do that. That's why I've got this out today. Again, that's for our forthcoming stems course. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is a lovely little controller. Agreed. Uh, don't let anyone badmouth this. It's a great piece. And also the DDJ 400 before it was great as well. So if you've still got one of them, uh, good on you. Uh, so what do we have here that you guys and girls are asking and that I can help you with? Uh, Nick says there are Chrome extensions that let you sample audio that's already playing in the browser. What a great tip. Thank you for that, Nick. Maybe tell us the name of the extension. Uh, Craig says, hi, Phil and the team and everyone else. I got here 14 minutes late. Right, you can watch the 14 minutes that you missed uh, at the end. Uh, Philip says, I'm on Mac and VB cable has never given me problems. So that's good to know, um, but it's available as an option uh, black hole as a, as a replacement. I mean, they both do exactly the same thing. I just have found over the years that black hole is the better one on the Mac. Anyway, um, so uh, this is a question for uh, uh, people looking at it right, from f uh, physical for posterity about software. So if you're thinking about software and subscriptions and buying software, this is uh, hopefully going to be helpful to you. So you say, uh, I know you can use a monthly subscription for Serato, but you can also purchase a license outright for Serato. You can't purchase a license outright for Rekordbox. It is sub only. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Rekordbox is sub only. Rekordbox in its free version, in other words, in the version that is unlocked by Rekordbox DJ controllers, all of them, even the cheapest ones, is very, very good. It probably has everything you're possibly going to need on it. Serato's free version, Serato DJ Lite, isn't you're going to want the pro version, right? So if you buy a cheap Serato controller and it hasn't got Serato DJ Pro in the box, 
you really are going to be out of pocket because it's expensive. It's $449 to buy Serato with everything you need because you do need the extras, the add-ons that are not even given to you with Serato DJ Pro. Now you can get away without most of them, but the one you really want is pitch and time. That is the add-on that allows you to move the pitch up or down of a track. In other words, to do key mixing. Without that, you can't do key mixing, which is poor for Serato. You used to be able to buy that for $29. You can't anymore. So uh, yes, Serato you can buy or subscribe to, but no, it's not particularly good value, especially if you're unlucky enough not to have that pitch and time add-on. Rekordbox, even though it's subscription, uh, is free when you plug in a Rekordbox controller. It's got probably everything you're ever gonna need, including key shifting. So I think currently Rekordbox is by far the better value of the two. Uh, so let's grab another um, live question. This is the Ruckus talking about the, um, the uh, piece of software called Black Hole that we were showing you for um, Mac, which is the software that lets you, uh, that lets you uh, do that audio routing inside the, the, um, inside the computer. And the rocker says, why does it say donate $10 or I can't afford to donate? Um, the Ruckus doesn't like that, do you? Uh, because your point is, well, what if, you, what if you really can't afford? Why shame people? I think it's less shaming people uh, than um, um, trying to encourage people to pay for it if they can. I mean, but yeah, I see what you're saying there. Um, so, uh, right, what else do we have here? I'm looking for apps that you use or little tips for making your DJing easier, uh, but I'm also looking for anything else that I can help you with today. Um, so a couple of you saying we've had the license for Serato before all the subscription be business began, uh, which is cool for you. Um, all I want in Audacity is LUFS measurements, says Philip. They already have loudness normalization, so the code is there. Let's see the numbers. Yeah, you know, it's not perfect Audacity, but it is pretty damn good. Uh, Adobe Audition is the best if you're going to pay. I agree, Adobe Audition is awesome, but you are paying for that software in that case. But thank you for that, Leo. Uh, Serato Studio, says the Muscle Montana. If you know, you know. Thank you for that. Not free, of course. Uh, it's not free. It does cost a little bit, but I love RipX for making remixes. Uh, or is it Rip? Yeah, I think you're saying RipX there, A.D. Foster. Um, so Stuart says, hi, Phil. I hope you're well. Now that Tidal has stopped stems, I'm looking for a good record pool in the UK. I'd say to have a look at um, DJ City, have a look at Zip DJ, have a look at BPM Supreme. Uh, they're all good. Uh, you can access them from the UK. I'm pretty sure you can access them from the UK. Uh, greetings, uh, says Jerry. This is a great topic. Um, and I am a um, uh, greetings from the Rock of the Rock, St. John's Newfoundland, Canada. Uh, so greetings to you from the Rock of Gibraltar, which is where we are. Big rock out there, massive thing. Uh, right, uh, DJ Tash is in South Africa watching from down there. Hello, DJ Tash. Uh, so Andrew says, VB Audio also have an app called Voice Meter Banana for Windows. It's an amazing router. It works like a virtual mixer. So imagine that'll be a little bit like Loopback, uh, won't it? So Loopback is a Mac version. This is a paid for app uh, for the Mac. It looks like this. Uh, Loopback is pretty cool uh, because you can say like, so for instance, in Loopback, I could say, okay, take Serato, loop it into here. Uh, and I want you to loop that back to my, currently it's looping to BMD uh, HDMI. In other words, this is currently looping out and to my audio mixer section of my video switcher that I'm using to present this show to you. So in other words, if I now get Serato up and running, I don't need an audio cable uh, on Serato at all. Plug in, plugged into the back of my, this audio cable here, <laughs> that one there. I don't need that plugged into the back of here. I can just have the Serato audio running directly down the USB cable and into the mixer. And that can be useful if I'm using my studio audio for something else, for instance. Uh, but also I can set up, for instance, I could then go and put, um, I don't know, we could put something else in there as well. So I could put uh, the audio coming from Audacity, for, for argument's sake. And so I could also be presenting a show where I'm showing you audio on the Audacity app and also on Serato DJ Pro, and I'm not having to go and switch between these in my settings. Loopback is, is a very good way of doing what I've been talking about today, but you pay for it for a Mac. We've been using that for a long, long time. Um, so there we go, thank you for that. Right, what else can I help you with today, people? Uh, this is from... Um, Sony man who says, Phil, I'm curious to know if or why Pandora isn't an option to obtain music in DJing. 
uh, like Spotify, etc. where well, you can't get music in your DJ apps in Spotify, you can't get it in Apple Music, it's only Tidal, Beatport, BeatSource and SoundCloud. I don't know why you can't get Pandora in DJ software, if that's, if that's what you're asking, if I'm, I've understood you perfectly, I don't know the answer to that. You can't get Pandora outside the US anyway. Um, out of interest there. So David says, how are you doing? Do you think Roland will make another controller <laughs> before I buy the Rain 4? There's nothing wrong with this one. This is the Roland controller that, that we recommend. We recommend this day in, day out to people. Uh, the Roland 707M. It's probably the best Serato controller in the world, I think. Better than all the others, even though it's not as posh looking, even though it hasn't got modern buttons to control your stems and stuff directly. You can always map them on there. Um, so no, I don't. I'm, I wouldn't expect another controller from Roland anytime soon, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but we do like that one. Um, so uh, Levia says, glad you're still around. God, you're making, making us feel old, Levia. Um, stopped DJing uh, a while ago, but I've started again. Um, uh, and now I'm back and I'm glad to see that you're still kicking around. Kicking around, eh? I don't know. Um, thank you anyway, Levia. Nice to see you back. Where have you been? What's up? Uh, so N3A says, hello. Every time I look at cheaper controllers, I find they're missing features that I want to use. Should I get one anyway for starters or just keep saving? It's a really good question. So this is, this is the advice we give. You know, here at Digital DJ Tips, we're a DJ school, right? We teach a lot of DJs how to start off in this hobby. And what we always say is this. There's no point going and spending a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars on a DJ controller that you're not A, sure that you need all the features of, and B, sure you're going to be DJing in a year because you might go get bored of the whole hobby, right? Much better to go and buy something like the DDJ Flex 4 here, which comes with great software and all the basic features you need for like 300 or something. This here, as I've said already in this show, is in use by DJs who've got pro gear uh, like this here. They've got this kind of stuff. They DJ on this kind of stuff. This is, this is their bread and butter. This is what's there when they get to work. They've still got one of these because these are awesome. So the point is you can learn on one of these. These can be really pushed to their limits. You can add extra controllers to get more features or you can map the functions. Uh, in our digital DJ lab training, we've got a whole thing on MIDI mapping record box also in our record box course. You can map these things so you can get the buttons doing whatever you want, but you won't outgrow it if you use it carefully, if you learn everything it can do, and you concentrate on learning to DJ instead of wanting every button and every bell and every whistle. And then when it is time to buy something big, and who knows, you might get really big and start booking gigs and start saying, I want the pro gear. Well, you're not gonna wanna sell this because you love it and it's a great piece of backup equipment. So you can't go wrong by buying, and it doesn't have to be this, you know, there's some great little controllers for Serato, this is for Serato, but mainly for Rekordbox. Uh, there's some great little controllers for Serato as well, one that we're a, a bit of a fan of, especially if you're a Scratch DJ, you might like this, because it's kind of laid out like Scratch decks, is the um, Serato Rev 1, which I've got here, uh, but also uh, the Newmark Mix Tracks are very nice, although do be sure that you're getting the version of Serato you want because it's an extra cost otherwise. Um, anyway, so yeah, there are other cheaper controllers, but honestly, I think this is the one right now. This is the one to beat right now, the Flex 4. I'd say go for something like this. Don't worry that there's features that you want missing. Of course, there's features that you want missing, but you don't know the ones you're gonna need and the ones you aren't gonna need right now. Okay, people, we are live. It's the show where we answer questions that DJs didn't know they didn't know. Uh, and the first one here uh, in, in front of me that's been, been highlighted for me to share with you is Stereo Tool, apparently, says Euronation, is a great tool to make your live stream sound better. Great, well, thank you for that tip. Uh, I was asking for software that you use and you are sharing. Um, so Joel says, I'm using Engine DJ uh, as a platform. I just wanna see a few more updates in the file management. Uh, Physical for Posterity says, I've seen a few videos that claim Audacity is spyware since it was purchased a few years ago. Is it truth or conspiracy? Uh, it's conspiracy. Uh, Margiela Madman 44 on Twitch says, do you think Serato will keep moving towards subscription over purchasing after being bought by Pioneer? Quite likely, or rather quite possible. I don't know if it's likely, quite possible. Um, so hello to Damon in Detroit on Facebook who says, I still use sound to edit my mixes. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean there. Soundforge maybe? Soundforge is a great app. Uh, Tido on YouTube, what, what up Phil? I bought my first Phil Weeks record last week. Hashtag gramophone records. How do I check if my turntable is spinning accurately? Does it sound all right? 
Use your ears. Uh, I, you know, vinyl is big, isn't it? I've got a turntable at home. We're loving getting some old vinyl. It's all the old stuff or the albums that we really, really like. Uh, there's something about turntables, I agree. Uh, so this is from DJ Sarah Hall on YouTube. Um, Phil, the Zone PX5 has got a built-in audio interface that can be used with Traktor DVS. Um, will the audio interface received from Traktor and sent to OBS on the same laptop? It should. You might end up using one of those apps I've just been talking about to do the routing inside your computer. But in theory, yes, any audio interface, including the one in the PX5, should work with that. Oh, here's another great app. Great app. Thank you. I knew you guys and girls would help. Uh, this is another, another one that uh, I would thoroughly recommend playing with. Uh, JD on YouTube says, speaking of free apps, Spec, S-P-E-K, Spec, is a great open source software, which is an audio spectrum analyzer that ensures your MP3 is of its actual bit rate quality. I agree. Spec is awesome. Thank you for showing that. Uh, Benny uses an app called Moises. Uh, on my iPhone, says Benny, that separates stems uh, to use the full version. It's $4.99 a month. I use the free version. If I need more, I just upgrade for the month. So there's an iOS app there that can separate stems. Yeah, there, there are a lot of them out there. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. Uh, Lou says, I missed the whole show. I couldn't find you on Facebook. I'll have to catch you on the replay. Oh, well, um, sorry that you couldn't find us there. Uh, so Blue Minstrel says, good afternoon, Phil. Seeing the Flex 4 got a mention, I think uh, that there's a problem. Okay, well, let's see if we can help you with it. Sometimes my bass goes away. I'm using a Flex 4 and Virtual DJ. Do you think the problem is hardware or software related? Definitely software related. Definitely solvable, which is the good news there. I don't know what it is, but it's definitely solvable. Uh, apparently, um, there's an app called Virtual Hi-Fi Cable, which is another good free software to do that internal routing. So thank you for that, DJ Sky in Sweden. Uh, virtual DJ is the way forward for everything, says David. Uh, one price and you get the lot. Yes, I've had virtual DJ. I bought it in 20... 2004 and they've been upgrading it nicely for me ever since. Why does Audacity drop recording when recording long sets? Uh, probably some issue with those settings or the amount of memory. I've never known that to happen myself. Is there a better app for recording two laptop sets with a Pioneer mixer? Yep, get Pioneer's own DJ Rec app on your phone, which will plug into your Pioneer DJ mixer via the USB and then you can record straight from there, straight into your phone, uh, done. So yes, there is a better app than Pioneer DJ. Make it. Uh, okay, what else can I help you with, people? This is Digital DJ Tips. This is our live Thursday show. We've already talked about three apps uh, that DJs love and don't really talk about. Uh, and you'll see links to those underneath. Or if you've just joined us, you can watch the replay while I talk you through them. Uh, but uh, it's Thursday Q&A Live, live from the Digital DJ Tips studio. It's the show where DJs get answers to questions they didn't know they didn't know. Uh, right, what else have we got here? Mike, is there a quicker way of recording an hour long mix with voiceovers inserted? I record my mix and then I have to re record the mix and insert my voiceovers. So, do you want to do the voiceovers like while you're doing the mix? If you could do it while you're doing the mix, would you do that? Because what you could do, of course, is just plug a microphone into your microphone socket of your DJ controller. Some DJ controllers nowadays will route that through and into the recording that you're doing. Most won't, but some will. I think the Flex 4 might. Uh, I certainly know that this one does, if my memory serves you correctly, the, uh, the little Rev 1, uh, because the manufacturers are starting to realize that people want to live stream. And so they, they, they kind of figured it out that that's something that would be nice to add. So you could do that and then it'll just record. Or if it doesn't record that way, then another way that we used to do when we live streamed a lot was get a microphone, but a USB microphone with like maybe an audio interface or just a USB mic plugged into the computer. And then we'd record on the computer rather than in the DJ software and route the mic and the audio into there. Uh, but otherwise, you know, the safest way possibly is to add them afterwards because at least you can then get them right, I guess. Um, so Pete says Audio Hijack for the, for the Mac is really good. It's not a free app, but it is good. I agree with you. You can record audio from any app. I use it to record, record the stems output from Virtual DJ. And also in that app, you can add effects and you can add, we use it on our, um, on our Zoom calls because I want to take out the background noise in the room. I want to EQ the mic and I want to put some compression on my microphone. So yeah, uh, I agree with you. Uh, audio Hijack for Mac uh, from Rogue Amoeba. What a weird named company, but uh, yeah, it's a good, good app. Uh, okay, people, uh, greetings to uh, DJ Andre V from the Sandland, Dubai. 
Hello, uh, DJ Andre V. Uh, so, uh, some thumbs up here for the Roland 707M. Uh, great controller. I'm now looking at the Rain 4. Um, yes, I know you are because you told me before. Ask once, people. You waste my time if you don't. Uh, so, Mixmaster G says, great suggestion for DJ Pro AI as a backup. Yep, that is true. DJ Pro AI, DJ Pro AI is most people's favorite second piece of DJ software, I would say. Apparently, it's only $29 a year or free uh, with some features. I thought it was $49 a year. Maybe they've got an offer. Uh, so, Andrew says, a VB audio voice meter will let you route audio to two separate virtual outputs as well, which I found helpful for streaming and recording. Uh, and, okay, what else uh, do you want to help with or uh, what else do you want to share? Uh, I will get two or three more uh, comments here and two or three more inputs coming in on my live feed here. It's very exciting. It's like election night. You know, they stand there on election night and all the results are coming in. Feels a bit like that. Uh, only a bit like that. I've got to be honest. Uh, so this is from David Lunt who says, I would love controllers to have four decks. I know you can add decks, but I think a controller with four actual decks would be great. Yeah, it would, but it'd be too big, I think. I think that's why people don't do that. Uh, but you're right, you can add decks. The LC6000 is very popular. This little one here. This works with most software. You can just plug it in as an extra deck uh, and have maybe it's just a third deck on the side for your acapellas or your drops. This is the Denon uh, LC6000. Right, okay, let's talk apps. Any more apps you want to share with us? Um, well, not quite an app, but a question around computers. Hi, Phil. Why do I have to upgrade my late 2011 Mac in order to download Serato DJ 3.0? Because it's 12 years old. Computers, if you can get five, six, seven years out of them, you've done well. It's just the way of the world, unfortunately, there. Uh, what's the best software and hardware for going live? Uh, OBS software. OBS, it's free. Uh, Phil, I got a good price on the Tractor Scratch Pro. Is it still a good buy? Yep, it is. Uh, Drew says, faking the funk is similar to spec. It is indeed. Um, the new Max, says Michael, helping out the person who was asking earlier. They use a new chipset. Uh, as the programs built pre-2020 don't work on them. Uh, Peter says, I'm trying to find audio software to record my sets to upload to Mixcloud. Any recommendations on a free one? Virtual DJ Pro won't let me record for some reason. I tried Audacity, kept getting errors with it. Stick with it, Audacity will do the job. Uh, I was considering purchasing the latest hybrid turntable, that'd be the Pioneer uh, CRSS12, won't it? Uh, for my wife, as we still have vinyls and 45s, would you recommend a Pioneer mixer like an S9 to pair with it? It depends what you want it for, really. You know, an S9 is a Serato mixer, so unless you want to use uh, DVS, then there's not really much point. And unless you want to use Serato DVS, there's not much point because it's a Serato mixer. Uh, if you just want to play audio and you just want to DJ, then you don't need audio um, interfaces and all that digital stuff at all. You could just get a standard mixer. I mean, this is not the one to get. Cause it's 20, 30, 40 years old, God knows how old. This was my very first mixer. Technics SHDX 1200. You know, a standard, you can still buy standard audio mixers, get one for 100, 150 pounds or dollars. Uh, one of these and a pair of standard turntables will be enough if you just want to play uh, analog audio or, um, you know, any cheaper mixer, you don't have to buy an expensive Pioneer mixer, uh, any cheaper mixer that's got an audio interface in it and any pair of turntables like, for instance, the Reloop 7000s uh, will work with Record box. it will also work with, um, if it's a Serato enabled mixer with Serato um, and Tractor, Virtual DJ, all their DVSs will work with it. So not necessarily, no. I mean, yeah, a pair of Pioneer uh, CRSS12 turntables and a Pioneer mixer, in that case, I'd probably go for one of their uh, pro mixers like this here rather than a, a Serato scratch mixer it would be lovely, but you don't need to do that. But unless you tell me more about what you want it for, it's kind of hard to advise you there. Uh, right, I think we're probably there or thereabouts now, people. Thank you very, very much for sharing everything that you said today. One or two more questions then. That one on YouTube says, uh, question, Flex4, Smart Fader, this little button here, does some clever stuff, versus uh, Rev5 BPM trans transition, which is better or are they both pretty much the same? They're both fun, they're both different, they'll both be fun in your, to help you with your DJing. You won't use them an awful lot after a while, I don't think really. Um, so Mike says, I want to just ask again because I want to clarify. I meant voiceovers as in jingles, right? You want to drop jingles over your music. Just use the sampler. Put the jingles into the sample slots on your DJ controller and drop them in live. Um, simple. 
So yeah, that's going to be even easier for you to do. Uh, so I think we're probably done there, people. This has been a pleasure. It always is a pleasure. We've talked through three apps that DJs use, but don't really talk about to help them do some awesome stuff like ripping stems, like routing audio, and like recording and manipulating audio away from their DJ software to prepare stuff or to finish off mixes, all kinds of things. Hope you found that useful. This has been Thursday Q&A Live. I'll give you that link one more time uh, to go to this page here. So head into your browser, type in djtips.co slash stems, and you will come to this page here. Here is where you can add your email address to learn about our forthcoming mixing with acapellas and stems course. It's an awesome course. It, demystifies the whole job and gives you dozens and dozens of ways that you can use these right here, right now in your DJing. We're having a lot of fun making it here, as you can probably tell, uh, and we can't wait to bring that to you. I'm back next Tuesday and Thursday. Next Tuesday, we'll have another live tutorial. Next Thursday, we'll have another Q&A like this. Do come and join me, 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern. Meanwhile, from me in the studio, get good, get out there, make the moments, and we'll see you again very soon. Until next time, bye for now.